Oh, hello, hello, hello. This is Mohammed Shilon coming to Ona from the state of North Carolina uh, in the USA. Today, now Sunday, March 24th. And uh, we try to deal with trending topics as usual, trending topics in Sierra Leone. Uh, and one of which we all know say that the Kush issue, the issue of Kush, the extensive uh, uh, effects, use, and everything way to get on the on, on on the country, the country in reputation, the, the people of the country, and then um, the thing is becoming. We'll go show a, a brief picture or video of even how the thing be, become generational now. Not only are we messing up the young people by encouraging this Kush activity, but we are also now, uh, it is transferred to baby then within the bond because the parents or the mama them, uh, where they use Kush, the picking and they are being born addicted. So now, not only with the, with the, the leadership, they encourage the destruction of their young generation, the destruction of the uh, immediate generation after we, but now that generation, they will not even begin for do anything. They don't begin there now, within the bond, are beginning to have the adverse effect of Kush. So we just the sound the alarm. Even though we know say people, there are people where they profiteer, you know, out of this. Uh, we not get the power for make change. We can only talk about changes and make suggestions. So that would be one of the trending issues where we hope we go touch on today. Also, next Sunday, we will be dealing with it more extensively because we will get somebody in the show, another Australian, we will be a guest co-host. We will go help we for deep a little, for dig a little deeper into the whole process of the cause and effect of Kush. Because now what you will see the going at the country, now the effect of the of the use of Kush, when the, when people in the try to avoid, particularly people in government, parliament, the executive, they, they, what you would call, what you may call grandstanding. Because what in parliament they do now, they, they call folks them around and do, so I call that grandstanding because parliament in, in a lot of ways and the Kush issue have little or no role, uh, role to play now. Uh, but we'll get into that. And if anybody disagree with me, if they want to know my opinion why I say that, this is not for parliament at all. I think it's for the executive and the government uh, uh, agencies. So we will talk about that. The other trending issue, now the demolition of property. Okay, as a lawyer, it concerns me, both the, 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 the uh, similarity with the Kush, the effect of the, uh, the law with respect to the, the, the use of Kush, and then the demolition of the property, of property them, the two commonality, or, 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 or the commonality between the two is the fact that the, the judiciary is playing little or no role in then two major trending aspects of the, uh, the way they go on Australia. People's properties are being demolished without court order, without due process, without adequate notice. So we cannot allow a system for proceed or continue like that. that that's, that's chaos. That's lawlessness, you know? And uh, if we allow that, listen, it benefits no one, even the one who would give the orders for demolish a property them. And talking about that, because I don't, I'll be remiss in my comment if I not re reference, one of the property that's already earmarked for demolition by, I understand, Mr. Sandy, when a minister, or and I be minister, then not to be minister, then a minister again. Now be minister under APC, now be minister under 
Uh, and the cabinet member under the current government, they're not to be minister under the current government, they don't come back as minister under the current government. When somebody is going in and out like that, for me, the indication must be he's so indispensable that he's absolutely needed. But I understand saying I don't earmark some property them and I will be forced. These are so historic buildings them for demolition. And what we hear is that they want for demolished engine and they because they want the Saudi and Turkey for build embassies them up there. So we history no matter anymore. It's all about money. Money will go be but as it can go. You know? I mean Sierra Leone, as big as it is, with all the mountains and they will get. Saudi Arabia and Turkey can get other place for put their embassies. So we have to stop the strength. This thing about destroying, we save destroying the country and all of that. So, without much ado, let me just pass it over to my co-host, Mr. Victor Mengot, um, and make a touch on some of this thing. And as we go along, we may be, we may have, we may have a co-host. Every one of when I know Miss Fadima Savage, when I mean be the co-host this show, she may come on board today, and. By all indications, she will be on board next Sunday. So, uh, so if she happens to just pop up, please don't be surprised um, because she has a few other things that we want to add to the whole process. So, without much ado, let me turn it over to Mr. Oh, let me touch on one or two things. Uh, you know, I know the general things we can always do, and I for inform the general public how for reach we. By the way, if they, if they want to send in comments or make phone calls. So let me just quickly go over the phone and, and numbers there, as we always can do. We know, say, if you do call, if you want to make a toll free call, and uh, uh, it only apply to Mexico, Canada, and the US. And the only place I need, place that I need you go there where you go able to make a toll free call to this show. And uh, Canada, Mexico, and the US. And that number is 1-866-944-7722. 1-866-944-7722. If you do call from the United Kingdom, and you know I'm for spend money by long distance, you get an option. You can call toll-free, or I just mentioned. Or you can call a local number day, plus 44 20 80 89 1455 plus 44 Likewise, if you're calling from Australia, you also can call on the toll-free, uh, oh, sorry, 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 if I, I mistakenly said the toll-free, I was talking about, I meant uh, the WhatsApp. Please forgive me. Uh, if you call from England or you call from Australia, the Australia number is plus 61, 29, or 2909488437. Let me repeat. Calling from Australia and a plus 61 2909488437. But uh, from any location where you call, you can call on the WhatsApp line, which is applicable to every country wherever you may be or may, may be calling from. And that I've been for say. So if I say toll free, I'm sorry, the toll free only apply to America, the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Uh, the WhatsApp number will be 1343-997-5828. 1343-997-5828. WhatsApp can be used for anywhere except countries that may have some prohibition against using WhatsApp. And because I remember once upon a time, some years ago when I was in Saudi Arabia, you could not use WhatsApp. They just stop that from anybody from communicating on WhatsApp outside Saudi Arabia. So there may be other countries that you might want to call from that may not have, or that might not have uh, WhatsApp, or they know they allow WhatsApp to go through. Say something if you did China, that also might be the case. Uh, but those are the, 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 the numbers then for call. We also have a radio station, 91.9 FM. 
which can be heard primarily in Freetown, Sierra Leone. And in Freetown, in particular, you go the area more so than the eastern part of Freetown than the, the western area of Freetown. But uh, we are trying to expand the bandwidth so it can go not only for the entire western area, but for the rest of the country. Uh, we're working on that. So, but you can listen. This show is also carried on. And then from time to time, it's recorded, so you go when I can able to listen to them at some later date. In addition to that, we are carried on WhatsApp and we are carried on YouTube, we are carried on Facebook, we are carried on Instagram. So all of that, um, you get so many platforms or options for for what we. So please welcome, and uh, we are about to get the ball rolling. So with that. Let me turn it over to Mr. Mengot, my co-host. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Family in Akusho, we know say today Palm Sunday for the Christian them. And ride on, ride on in majesty. Now, a very important day for the Christian them. And I feel say we Muslim brothers them. Now almost two weeks now, the long day now this first month, and the month of Ramadan. So we pray there in our supplications and be accepted by God and Allah and the Almighty. Now, today turn the topics. You know, say, if I we, how me and my co-host, Mr. Shilon, can count this program, they say, all man appeal and I young gun. You know? <laughs> Mr. Shilon, as you know, he, na, na, na lawyer, he got a lot for talk about legal part of it. You could talk about the rights, the human rights violation, and all that. Me, my own view on this kush, I they look at in four different places this kush academic. We they talk about prevention. How do you prevent it? Then in education, awareness, you know, youth awareness. You get the drug law enforcement agency, when at the enforcement. You get the police, you get social welfare, then at the enforcement part. You get rehabilitation, then for the victims, then where I think say my co-host will talk more because we see say people and don't begin to take jungle justice. Where then they take coach victim, they care them go out, see one side way, then they creep the aid, they wash them and all that and they what does that say about human rights? Then of course there are so many institutions involved in this coach business where we hear say parliament, don't call them, let them go tell them what they do. Whilst we can no to all ten parliament for left till last minute. There's this big question of should we declare a state of health emergency and what in that they mean? So we'll go up much than this small. So now the Kush Disney. Then the next part of the show, where in a new area we would like for talk about now then property demolition, planning, and things to do with uh, tourism development and governance. So I hope saying I will stay with you and I feel free for the coming and ask questions because we want uh, this show for be as interactive as possible. We they learn from it now, and I said they learn from we, and we all they do this here for the betterment of we country. So over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mengot. So uh, let we start with the Kush business, then we could get to the demolition. With respect to the Kush, as I say, we will deal with that extensively, uh, more extensively next Sunday because we will get other, other guests. We probably, we get expertise in the whole process. Uh, but we will be derelict or reckless in with duty or careless if we, something like this, we, did, we get such an impact uh, with citizens them and the reputation of a country, we just glide over them. We'll not try for bring them up to the public and we know very well it's in a trending issue. And this is not an issue we should deal with just one time or twice or three times. We should continue dealing with it as many times as possible. And I also welcome disagreements because I've always said, I don't have a monopoly on ideas or knowledge. Sometimes I voice out, I voice out which I feel, uh, and uh, they say reasonable men may disagree. 
So I don't say anything by any stretch of the imagination, assuming that uh, I'm so knowledgeable that nobody can disagree with me. But I'm saying what I'm saying with the hope that I will persuade people, them, I will convince people. Them. But so feel free, call. I mean, I stand to be enlightened and to be disagreed with. Let's just do it mutually, respectfully. Also, I forget for mention, say, with the show already started, we're on trend now. You can call, the lines are open. So, in fact, already without beginning, forget some calls. So let me just stop me preamble now and just take a call. Let me see what in the person gets in mind. Hello, caller. Is there a caller on the line? Hello, caller. Okay. Okay. If he calls back, you can interrupt me. Just flash it. All right. Going back to what you have to say, um, I take the position that parliament is grandstanding. Grandstanding mean it's just a bluff or it's just a talk. It's all smoke, no fire. As we see repeatedly, as we even the caution the the country say, when I keep an eye on parliament with respect to the toll issue, because when I keep an eye on parliament with respect to the parental issue, because these are uh, issues that we must deal with. We cannot allow parliament for engaging in a pattern of deception. Then go, they make a lot of noise, then they sweep things under the rug. So for all them fit to the fire. And we also get to make parliament, and the government will say, they are not governing a bunch of stupid people, uninformed people. Because sometimes the rough shot way seems like they run on the country and the people is like nobody's informed. Nobody don't know anything. Now, going back to this uh, 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 issue of Kush, I take the position that parliament does not need to be in it at this point. Because what is the role of parliament? Then a legislative body. Legislative, legislative body means that then they pass law, that then they make law. Then in fact, in the, in, in the grand scheme of things, parliament is the most important arm um, of the governmental structure. Because now from them, everything they originate. The power of the president, presidency uh, 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 originate from them. The power of the judiciary originate from them. And then their own power. But the interesting thing about the constitutional uh, democracy is that not even parliament, one of the most important of the three arms, can do anything contra uh, contravening or breaking the constitution. So the constitution and the supreme law of the land. So I always remind people that there is no such thing as parliament is supreme. The supreme, the, the supreme law of the land, now what in the constitution say? So a lot of times what would they see, something in the constitution, then they say, but if it pleases the president or at the pleasure of the president or in consultation with the president, parliament can do this. You can't do that. So it's about time we begin for take, we laws them and we legislations them seriously, even if it means for redraft, for modify, for amend, you know, or rewrite, it's about time. But this going round and round and round like we go in a circle, is crazy, you know? So now this Kush business of parliament, the summon police chief, the summon uh, 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 and there's different agencies them. Should it not be uh, uh, the job of the executive? As far as we know, there, ha there has been very, very uh, deafening silence with respect to the effect, the adverse effect of Kush on the population. And let me look at the ramification. Let me see the, the, how it trickle down and how it affects people. Because we don't see policemen, they take Kush. We don't see uh, army man, they take Kush. We just see some responsible people, them probably just give it a try and then they get hooked on it or get a devastating effect on them. 
So we are more, I'm, see, when you deal with the effect, a more sensational, you know, what we see them about them and take them and they go creep the aid. But government should not allow that. Who are these people who are taking these people? And they, these people mean well, but they are not the law. If government not getting that authority today, I know it's in the of the sympathy of the heart. Then they go take them people here yeah, and wash them. Then bab them. Probably clothe them. Probably feed them. We don't see them mean well. They get the best of good intentions. You know? But I think there's a saying where they say, <laughs> the way to hell is paved with good, in with good intentions. So people that might mean well, but if we want to be a country of laws, and not a country of man, our laws, our laws of man, then we try to do things the right way. Then people are going to take them for people are for, for court them here and for take care of them. Let them get some kind of authorization by the very people them who are affected by this kush. Now, you will say they don't get the ability to get consent. Well, that's the challenge to the government. Maybe if parliaments want to do something, then for draft laws, for say, when these people are not able to give authorization themselves because of the mental, then diminished mental capacity, the, the law calls for, you get for appoint what you call a guardian. So we can probably begin for come up with what we call guardianship. You see, you round the number of people them up, we like we get diminished mental capacity. Let we're not even talk about the physical aspect of it. What would you see all the time? Say when they take the kush physically, they are no good. But if there is a, a, a diminished a, a, a mental capacity, then guardianship should come into play. Now I don't want to take up the time for a lecture when I'm watching a guardianship, but that's what the process will call for. Somebody get for be appointed. The system for be able to appoint certain people them, and the the, the 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 civil society also can help in trying to establish a pool of guardians where they can we can, we can sign on behalf of them people for make sure say them victims here are treated fairly because the fact that they say kush now for mean over for disrespect the humanity at the end of the day there are people like you and me. They are human beings. So we're going to treat them like we're fellow humans. But for the grace of God, any one of we could have been in that situation there. So if you find yourself in a position where you can help, not to take advantage or abuse the people in rights, because we have, the only way me and you will protect we own rights, now we'll look out for the rights of others, the, the less protected, you know, the least able in our society. But if we feel saying, I tell you, rich now we do not, who for begin for hala, when we reach now we don't want it, it will be too late because we don't empower the government for abuse people and rights all the way. So again, we get a bunch of lawyers in Australia, but I hope part of the legal profession, not for lose sight of we, as we train young lawyers in Australia, we're not for lose, lawyers not for lose sight of social events and, and you know, and the effect of social activities on the people. Uh, let me remind you again, say, America today, we will all talk about, so even though America get a long way to go in terms of racial justice, but they've come a long way. I remember even when I was in high school back home, uh, by the time we finished high school, there were times, there were places black people should, couldn't go to in this country. They were black only, white only. Black man who would sleep in a certain restaurant. Black man who would eat in a, I mean a certain hotel. Black man who would eat in a certain restaurant. You know? And um, black man who would be, attend certain schools. And this was just in the 60s. We know to talk about long, long, long time ago. Although, yeah, the 60s to now, 50, 60 years, but with respect to human history, it's not a long time ago. Because people like me, get sense knowing then thing have it happen. That's not too long ago. But how did it stop? It didn't stop by itself. You get a group of people that wouldn't call philanthropists, people that would get good heart. 
we say this is not right. What did happen? Just like how they stopped slavery, which was uh, inhumane. Okay, that has always been the case. The same thing happens where you get, uh, and give this example, the role where lawyers in play. Because we don't, I don't know if they emphasize that to the young lawyers they now, or the new graduates that would come to law school. When I cannot be oblivious to the injustices that would take place in the country. Because not only when I role, when I role as lawyers, not, no different from that of a doctor, you go medical school now for heal the sick. We as lawyers now for make sure say the 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 laws are followed. Okay, so I'd suggest say what you would see so now when others feel say you go law school you come out and all is, all is about is to make money, and I love what people can say. Well, I don't like for talk politics. What are you talk politics so you not talk politics so you are affected by politics on a daily basis. The price you pay for food, the price you pay for fuel, you know, the services they want you to get, all is affected by politics and politicians. So it's unavoidable. It's inescapable. So let we begin for face reality. You get to be concerned. You're not going to go into politics, just like me. I'm not a politician. I'm not into politics. I don't want to go into politics. But I'm a citizen. I'm a concerned citizen because there are a lot of unconcerned citizens. There are people way in Australia and we say, listen, as long as you don't affect me, you don't affect me, me, me mommy, me daddy, I don't care what can happen. But there are some of us who are concerned citizens. So as we train the young lawyers, then part of, part of it has to be let them see what can happen in the country and become fighters for justice. You know, because if we not do so, there are a lot of things with the trend in Australian working concern me about the law. When I look, I, I've been commenting about that the last time. When I look at people being accused of trying to overthrow a government, okay, in November, by January, people are being found guilty. How is that? That is such a serious crime. Discovery alone. In a case like that, when I say discovery, meaning information where the uh, 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 government forget the defense. And the defense, the motions they went in for file, for suppress, motion to suppress, uh, and all kinds of motion, motions, them. Uh, what we call pre trial motions. That alone could take six months to a year. And we already, people are on trial in two, three months. That's unjust. We are not taking uh, 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 the rule of law seriously. The justice system, the law, the law and the lawyers. Okay? Because it's a very, very, very serious crime. And when we see, say, then say, somebody already, lawyers are going to court already pleading and client guilty. Two months after they've been accused, there is no challenging of the circumstances under which confessions were made whether they were done within the law, or how were these confessions uh, uh, obtained from, from these people, or whether the confessions were coerced, whether people were tortured, aren't we concerned? You know? And if, if confessions were made under suspicious circumstances, the defense attorneys had then job down there for file motions to suppress. And all the motions, then they, by the time the court, the court rules on them, and then they go up on appeal, it will take about a year. And people are being tried and already convicted. I mean, I call that injustice. It's unfair. It's unjust. So we should be concerned. And people like me, I've been studied law, now one of the most advanced countries in the law, and I've been ex exposed to what you call one of the most sophisticated system in the legal system in the world, both in terms of courtrooms, law schools, process. I think I'll be derelict if I don't bring the observations they have forward. And I mean, not the only one. Once upon a time that the United States will get what you call Association of Australian Lawyers in the United States. And we'll be getting a very active association. 
But hey, um, the Bar Association in Sierra Leone show some kind of uh, resentment, resistance. We'll try our best for work with them together for the benefits of the country. But the powers to be within that circle, they were just uninterested. Uh, so that's well and good. But I don't say which, with some of we, we can continue to fight the good fight. So my concern about the Kush situation is the abuse of people and human rights, people and civil rights, people and, people and constitutional rights, you know? And these, then civil societies, what are they doing? The Bar Association, what are you people doing? You know? Now the other day we already said them go bear, and I think there have been prior incidents to uh, before that, but then go bear about 38 uh, uh, um, people who died as a result of uh, Kush use. How do they know that these people died of Kush? Was there any postmortem? Do you know? And if there was postmortem, who, who were present to represent the interests of the victims? Is that how we want for run with country? You know, I mean, there's so much going on. We better take things seriously. I keep saying for land book, it's one thing forget, but kupa kupa ku diploma you put on at the wall, where American and get a phrase. Then say, you diploma know what the paper is written on. Because we see more and more and more of that in Australia. You know, people in the run car America, yeah? Then go do some short courses in Harvard, in Georgetown, in Yale, in the University of North Carolina, all them top-notch universities then there, just for go and put paper on a wall and say, I get this, I get that, I get PhD, I get LLM, I get this and that. But show me what that education they do uh, uh, and put in you for enhance or improve the betterment of people. That's why we all the land book. Oh, that should be the idea behind it. You know? But we are so hung up into getting paper qualification. We don't forget the purpose for which we the land all this book. You know? So my concern is we need to go back to square one. We need for chair parliament, maybe parliament needs to slow down. Hold the government accountable. What are you doing? Is this Kush business being adequately addressed? Why has it, look at the reputation now. We, we have become infamous for being the Kush capital in the world. We've become so unpopular now. Guinea is complaining. Liberia is complaining. Gambia is complaining that we, 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 we the export Kush in the country. I mean, how can we be proud? I don't know about, I know there are certain Sri Leoneans. I know that for sure. They are prouder of being APC than to be a Sri Leonean. They are prouder of being SAPP than being a Sri Leonean. So as long as not to SAPP you condemn, not to APC you condemn, they're not going to no problem. But I am, because I'm a Sri Leonean, a proud one too. A sensitive Sri Leonean who gets angry, upset, uh, when I see, say, my country can do better. And I happen to be one of them Sri who will not belong to political party either, because I don't get, in fact, the smaller parties, them, I get more trust in them than the two big parties, them, that are no good. You know? So, um, we need for respect the law. Parliamentarians, they need for power, parliament itself in general, they need for, for, for rise up and start doing what you elect them in the parliament for do, in order to cooperate with the government. And, you know, let, let the truth be said. Because of this lackadaisical way we would do things, with the outgoing party, we'll be gay government, and the current one, the style and the same. You know, appeasement, ruled by appeasement. You know, so you want to hush the opposition, by giving them uh, harsh benefits on the side. 
So when injustices are done, nobody complains. We get for strengthening with judiciary because where do you go to? And when you hear, hear is something like uh, top police officers are engaged in corruption, when are they enfor enforce the law? Who will be concerned? I remember the days of the Gbeshe Kamara them, of the Alpha Kamara them, of the William Lee them, you know, and on and on and on, where being a police officer meant something. And the police themselves, they can do better if we restructure the system. So my thing is, this Kush business, uh, there is so much gross abuse. People are being buried without actually determining the cause. And this is in a Kush. We don't know whether among them people in there, some of them might simply be victims, you know, of extra uh, judicial killings because of political ideology. We don't know. We have to act more. The news people, them, have to be more involved. So uh, there is a whole lot I can, I, can, I can talk about. But let me stop right there on the Kush. We'll get back, to, we'll get later on to the demolition of the, um, the demolition issue. But let me go back to my course. Like I said, the lines are open. People are welcome to call. Uh, and people are welcome to send in comments. Uh, Mr. Mengot, back to you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for the legal um, exposure. But as usual, as me say, you make some statements they will go and respond to, waiting at the whole of parliament and our parliament for be part of this. For me, I will look at one, parliaments call them people there yeah, because we always get a reaction. And we see the people that we go, the inspector general, and when you go parliament, now you go begin talk about what you want to do for Kush. Now, the key question is, if we want to tackle the Kush menace, we already get law, a law we establish an institution called the NDLEA, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. It was established to an act of parliament. But some of we were disappointed with the head of that uh, agency, they go to parliament and tell the MP and say, in short staff, for all, listen, a national drug law enforcement agency. It gets, I don't know if we get a video, we can play on for let people lay here. I don't know if the controller can play on for we. And I'm worried, as many of us are in this room, who is going to fix Sierra Leone? If every part in this country, every village, every town is being ravaged by Kush, as we are sitting in this room right now, I can guarantee this room that if you go all across this country right now, you'll find thousands of our children being free down on the least village in this country. They are nodding. So who is going to fix Sierra Leone if we don't act now? Since I took over the agency in October, as I said earlier, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency for the whole country has only 12 permanent staff. 12. When I took over, seeing the gravity of the situation, we immediately embarked on community sensitization. Very, very heavy. But up to date, as I said in October, around the TV, radio stations, everywhere I've gone, the agency does not even have a bicycle. We don't. Even electricity. Thursday, before I left the office, out of my own pocket, I paid one million just for us to have light in that office. So it is something I'm very, very passionate about. And I'm ready for this fight. Night, day, I'm a former military man. I'm ready for the fight. All I'm asking for, let the requisite support be given to us. 
Then as head of the agency, if I don't fight, is that all of it? Yeah, I think that's all of it. Limited in terms of resources, human resources, resource capacity, as well as resources to be able to augment the work in that center. The Ministry of Health, NDLA, the Ministry of Youth, and of course the Ministry of Social, Work, Social Welfare, we are very adamantly working to make sure that we work. But unfortunately, we can only host about 50 for now. If you check the records of the Ministry of Social Welfare, we currently have over 300 young people brought to the ministry by their parents who are on the waiting list. And this is just eyes, professionals that are calling the lines of NDLA, the Ministry of Social Welfare, what is it that you can do for us? Unfortunately, we cannot do everything. But working with our colleagues, Honorable members, again yesterday in Bo, thanks to the IG, your um, inspector or the AIG there, AIG Kane, yesterday again intercepted a large amount of kush. And that was a major issue. They are working their ways out. But what do we do? We take them to the rehabilitation center. We have things that we know we want to do, but we are, we are restricted to do it, we are constrained. The key thing for us as professionals now working together, how are we going to reintegrate them? What is it that we will do? Do we have the skills to be able to reintegrate? Do we have the resources? We have the political will. We have people who are passionate about it, but the problem is where we take them after they have been rehabilitation, rehabilitated. And as I talk, Sierra Leone does not rest in the western rural or western urban. We need, we need more centers like this. We need nurses. We need mental health nurses. We need therapists. We need social workers. We need doctors. We need psychologists. Just the first centre that we have we we have launched here, we've worked. I want to leave that to the Ministry of Health to be able to give us the story that you really need to. Hear. It's better you hear it from the professionals. But the constraint is something that we have to look very, very, very clear. But what we really want are three key areas, honourable members. The first thing is to have a very clear political direction from this house. The second is the resource. And then the third that we really want is for all of us to work to make sure that whatever gains that we have in, in terms of free time, that should not only remain in free time, but to join hands together in order for us to roll it out. So we have currently have uh, 39, as you have heard. We've lost about, we started with 50, but at least we know about 83, 84% We've been successful so far. And we are hoping, we are hoping the next couple of weeks we will still be able to maintain that and we'll be able to have we have detoxed them. They are currently going through the rehabilitation and of course we move on to the reintegration. Kadiatu is looking after a six week old baby. His mother is living in the charity's rehab center. Born a Kush addict, he's suffering from withdrawal. It's really tormenting. Even right now, they don't wash, they don't eat, but they the bed, bed it's in the bed. Yes, go ahead, yeah. Mr. Mengu. Now, from what we talk, there are two parts of it. <clears throat> the first part is who gets demand from the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and NDLA. We say this was an agency created by an act of parliament. And for a whole country with 16 districts, you only get 12 staff, then 12 staff, then they, obviously, then based in Africa. So they don't get no other staff anywhere. He complained about logistics. He said they don't even get bicycle. So if they are enforcement agency, how do you expect them to move? 
the man claimed to be a well, Lano said claim. It's always saying an ex military man in one fet. Now that makes you pull one million in your pocket for put electricity. So your office self no get electricity. But all the entire way talk, low go pan, the key issue, you they talk about prevention. And now look at one area where in a new area we I can explain to people like, some of the lapses, the institutional lapses. Now, when it comes to border security and border control, border security and border control, because how the Kush way they not accuse we say they go through Guinea, they go through Liberia, and they go through Gambia. They never go by air, they never go by sea, they never go by road. And there's an ECOWAS protocol and joint border operation, which means now take like we border them. The two men border them for, for go Guinea, you get the one at Balamuya. For go Liberia, you get the one at Jendema, we call Bowara side. That's so Liberia, I want to call them Bowara side. We are a member of ECOWAS. This is another lapse. We go, go sign treaty, we get them protocols there. They, there's an ECOWAS protocol on joint border operation, which is for trade facilitation prevent human trafficking, prevent drug, 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 drug smuggling, and prevent contraband. For God's sake, up till now, we don't need to talk about how to get a joint border operation with both Guinea and Liberia. We all know the Yenga situation. We're not doing that today. Me and then I also, as Mr. Shilong can tell you, I don't wear many hats with me transport and logistics. I was one of the, the, the author of the, the, the ECOWAS manual on joint border operations. And when they do border operations, you get sequence of controls. The agencies, the way they did it. So which means Sierra Leone and Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea, we're going to get joint border operation. Because when you go through border, you get processes and systems for individual. The first point where they go through, now immigration, for sure say, you will come. Now, ECOWAS, we don't get a common identity card. We now, you never even use passport, that biometric identity. So after immigration, the next part where they go, now customs, any goods to declare, right? After that, now the sequence of control that they talk so now, we have to customs, now that then now you go to NDLA, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, which means we then forget staff now them border points in day. Then for even get patrol, surveillance, because not through border them, the drugs in the past. After that, you forget to look at photosanitary. Photosanitary, now all them things and they for do with plants them. Because some plants in the way na endangered species where they go to, then of course you get veterinary. When are for the animals, you know the so way they transport animal across border, it can get sickness. So let's set up this system of border control, border surveillance, get bilateral treatment and treaties them for able to address this issue of we border. And where are they emphasize this border security? Let's go back in history because me and my let go back. If we look at the war, the lack of border control. Just a few days ago, now we witnessed the time where the first gunshots for the war, now Bomaru. How did that happen? The lack of border control and border security. Ebola come. Now the same thing, Ebola starts from Guinea. It can't salon, it spread through the border. The other time we been get animal disease, we spread through border. So until we invest money in that thing, and they just tell it, say, where you didn't have that tongue, you get your os. You don't build, you find us. Then you don't get fed. Even if you get you get some side way open, where people can just enter in and out. So now risk. So why don't we take border security and border control effectively and all the agencies most of the agencies are under one ministry we are the ministry of internal affairs right because police they're under ministry of internal affairs 
Then, of course, you get another ministry when I finance NRA, National Revenue Authority. Some of them are then when are they customs they under because you get for go through customs and then they look for them contraband. You get immigration with inside under 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 uh, internal affairs as well. Immigration go border and sister the way they do temple run. Where they go for car for car from the grassroots now they look for greener pastures, which is very ironic. So that emphasis on border security and border control. And also, when Parliament approve an institution, it is their role not to go get crisis. You can have two ways because each parliamentary uh, committee there for every department and ministry. Then for call their ministry, they their oversight committee. Then they are like special like I mentioned. Then get for looking into the policy, administration, finance of the ministries. Then so even when they come budget, I should say when internal affairs minister put budget. Then they look budgets every day. They will most put budget for NDLA. So now that's in the parliament for ask questions. Say, but this important agency, yeah, National Drug Law and Enforcement Agency. Now this is not the budget, almost not the budget, so they don't give them. Somebody write, Mr. Moderator, those facilities are non-existent in all our so-called cross borders. They only exist on paper. Don't waste your breath. Yes, the usual. Somebody said I don't waste my breath. But we are here to point out lapses and what should be done. That is why we are here. And they say then they will, we get laws then. We get protocols then. We get ECOWAS protocols. So then the first part. The second part where the second speaker talk about, that the one we come to rehabilitation. For God's sake, the rehabilitation center we didn't get. It only there for host 50 people. 50, just 50 for the entire country. And as we talk, it turns, we don't get, we, 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 we uh, come as place in a salon, College of Medical and Allied Health Services. He's talking about training nurses. He's talking about doctor. For one time, we'll be only know of one psychiatric doctor in the country. We don't die recently, Dr. Naim. Naim been there for a long time. In fact, people, let me make, let me make joke about it. Say, you don't go see Dr. Naim? So since Dr. Naim, how many psychiatric doctors they don't get? How many psychiatric nurses we don't get? Then we get the College of Medical and Allied Health Sciences. These are some of the things and the training we them for they provide. Not for just go train no more. Train, as you say, train for look at the needs. We get for do needs analysis. We institution and get for do needs analysis. They get for know the people that we then train. Who side they need them for go work? Who side are the gap? Encourage people them. Give incentive. We get we get people like WHO then go help we for training. We get other philanthropists as you say, the Carnegie Foundation all over. So now for put things together. Then he also say now three things they lead for do. He talk about political political will. So when you talk about political will. It come back to one issue I want to talk about, leadership. The president is both the head of the executive and a member of parliament. There's this big debate coming on now. Then they say whether we forget a state of health emergency. What does that mean? When we get over COVID, forget a state of health emergency, parliament get for being involved. It means, say, the government Get forget a statutory instrument. What is a statutory instrument? A law. We say, now so 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 thing we want to do. These are the resources we want to put into the whole thing. But now hold on there. I think so. We'll get a caller on the line. Law, listen to a caller. Hello, caller. What's you know your name? Who say you call from? Oh, you don't necessarily have to tell your name. But wait, who say you call from? Hello, yeah. Mr. Shilon and Mr. Mengot, my good afternoon. This is now the call. Welcome. Um, yeah, I just want to um, make me submission on this um, <laughs> sensitive and very important topic on this push. I think now, for the past seven or eight years, when Umudan is talking, I, I, I think some time ago you invite um, um, the 
um, psychiatrist, doctor, we may even um, in the in the easy early education on that. As it was in a combination of various factors, we got, just as soon as I used just now that government in government house, we always believe in reaction. We are reactionary instead of being proactive because this thing you don't do. Um, Tima, we need the surface for quite a long time now, and our way you don't explode now. Then you see government officials, even the, the, the parliament, they scratch their head for finding solutions. Just like when una, una, just like when una, are you the, 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 this is a combination of, I believe, say, um, of fact, this fact, um, the all hands on deck, now a combination of we all, we all, everybody for collaborate. But government gets to take the lead, just as like Mr. Mengo just rightly said, the political will for this. Because look at where the officials say. We take the, the act already, don't they? It all set up the agency. Now, waiting left for let them do, now for support to the agency, the agency, they, they need, because that national drug enforcement law agency, they didn't forget the, get investigators there. Then you forget investigators them. The Ministry of, if, they forget offices now, all the 16 districts, manned by officials. Now the border, manned by officials. And with this um, 12 staff where they get, an officer said they were able for first to be first. With the, Ministry of, with, the, with the Ministry of Social Welfare, the Ministry of Social Welfare, just 50 for a whole country, the rehabilitation center them. It is small. We need the rehabilitation center. All this, all, all the, all the decisions for rehabilitation centers there. Because it after the rehabilitation, and the minister make mention say after rehabilitation, what next? We don't want to be picking and go go back when them when them young youth there then go back to go take the drug. Then after rehabilitation, are just for re reintegrate them. Government, we don't say they don't set up civic centers. When I don't go to the communities, and they because when I go for set, when I go for the proximity of them civic centers, and they for attract them, you say when I go for go to the communities, then when I get for involve the traditional leaders, then when I get for involve the religious leaders, then when I get for involve the councillors, then the the the, 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 lo the local government, all them 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 sixteen districts, and they when I build them civic center, then they encourage them, you say they after rehabilitation for let them go go there for go learn something. And it's possible that they give them small, small stipend and give them lunch. By so doing, we are able to attract them for making them stay there for work. And government need for recruit psychiatric nurses here. Because this, 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 we, we just get one psychiatrist home in the whole country. We need psychiatric nurses. Because you need, you need, you need the counselors. We need, we need, we need counselors. So governments get to take the bull by the own. Governments get a great role for play if they really want to see us for the effect this way. Yeah. Because the fact that them for take the lead. We all be not supporting, everybody get for support. In your little way, we all get for support. Every nook and cranny, we all get for support. But government gets a bigger role for play. You see? The rehabilitation centers them there for multiplier. You get 300 with a weight. Then you say on a just fifty now on a to accommodate. That is so minute. They need for replicator replicator. On a build more rehabilitation centers. On a on a on a recruit more social workers. Then more counselors. Then more psychiatric nurses. Then we need more of them. That is system. If the psychiatric nurses, then people they, you get you get students when they go in for them. How do get for make that attractive for their students? Then we don't want to go for doctors and calls. Say okay, well, we will go now. This, 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 and this, or, uh, 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 more allowance for them now giving for do psychiatric nurses. And this government get for get, government get for the, the bulwark that government in Andy did because all others where they support, and be it NGO, be it traditional leaders, or be it religious religious leaders, or now government get for take the lead. Just as when I rightly say, I just I just say for lab, make this submission as sub super. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. If you have more, please call back. We'll greatly appreciate it. Let me take another call. Hello, caller. Please tell who side you call from. And if you wish, you can state your name. Hello, viewers. This is now Omar the call. Hello, Mr. Omar. Welcome. Okay. Um, anyway, thank you for the program. I thank you for the program. Um, first of all, um, Law said the fight therefore be serious. But uh, what you know for encourage uh, jungle justice. Slowly not a banana public. You know, we know that a banana republic will be for say everybody can do what he feel for do. We know see yet the 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 way the condition on in that country bad with drugs. But for say you they see youth man they gather they go gather then come to youth man they climb up the head. We know it's level the eight. But we don't reach. <laughs> let let them discourage anybody to do that. If they want help, if youth man they want help. Let them help for go around the prayer message, peace message, prayer message against Kush. Then go other way than they do. I'd rather for go and get at and company and script aid. I don't know who that get that power there. Then one thing again, we will call okay now to the, the agents who are responsible. The agents who are responsible, I feel say the government, this government, will empower this agency by all means. That money where they use for OP other offices, them they spend. I feel say now this agency them for spend and And we see when Nigeria, for instance, when the Yahoo business see them better, better one, then create a body where they go after them. We feel say government for empower this people, more the the commissioner where responsible the anti the anti drugs agency, then for empower and get more sufficient um um, um financial support. Make sure it built in team very well. And if possible, let them allocate some six, um, CIDs, not only police with into uniform, but let them make sure they allocate to CIDs, particular force where it be for say in go deal with them for make sure they enforce the law. If it's not that one for C. One law we see offices them, one law we see government offices the way responsible for do a particular job they do. They will see them they do rather than they see oh, some random civilian they are going to gather them company and street they go and bab them where you know necessary. You know, we want to see that what let the, the government and the parliament let them give that man enough power, not the power for go against political because alone when they give more power, just know then they then, then they dilute the power and make them to another use. Not to that kind of power we want to we want to let them give them power where in the fight against drugs in that country. Let them give them power away before say at least let it get in your investigation team. Let it get in your form of CID the way they go around for investigate issues. Because most of the time there way something happen. If you then say they then they sell drugs now, before ever the police then they can the people are all run away because they don't say that way they can they say uniform. But if they don't say don't get people like CID like where they investigate the use and the use of these drugs and all the people that make sure they face the law. We all ask Sierra Leone for support that, or for support the government towards that. This fight, not to a fight of APC, this fight, not to a fight of SFPP. This is not a Sierra Leonean fight. However, some of we just be against that random people, we just they gather any sign where they go and hold and company, they go and creep, creep, they may know it's not necessary. You know, we're not in a banana republic where everybody for do that. Now, me, I see, I see, now, a form of jungle justice. You know, I feel so for the for the discouraged we young company Sierra Leoneans and to us that we know said so that they do and they plan them in good faith, mm. but not that way for going about them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Omar. As always, thanks for calling. Um, before I pass it over to Mr. Mingot, be there in the middle of telling us something. But we get a policy of trying to forget we call us the mean. Also, so they can throw in their own little sense. So we get we get some comments that will come in. Let me just read one. When the commissioner of police says he will not become a police officer in his own next life, it says it all. Well, uh, maybe it says it all. We don't know what he means. Uh, I would like for him for elaborate on that. Is it because the work is challenging? Is it because the work, not the compensate them enough? I mean, is it because um, it could be for a variety of, I wish the person can just elaborate or the officer can just elaborate on that. Lay windows, not draw uh, all kinds of conclusions. 
But um, the way callers then don't talk about, with respect to psychiatrist, um, I think now we get a, uh, a psychiatrist, young man by the name of Dr. Jallo. I know a little bit of that because I get it, my daughter is a psychiatrist, Naya. And she was so much interested in helping Sierra Leone that she was keeping in church even before Dr. Jallo go do in residency, I think in East Africa somewhere, but going to be anywhere now West Africa, uh, we we'll not, we'll not begin any other re, uh, psychiatrist or, or institution where you go do in residency. So he had to go all the way, maybe Kenya or Tanzania or Uganda, one of those countries. But before then, he and my daughter be in, in, in contact. And uh, so they answered Dr. Jalo now. I don't, they, the, the review over the about the Kisi Mental Hospital is that is very well run. Patients are seeing some um, benefits from the treatments. Patients are becoming very close to normalcy. So it was good news, and that was told to me by my daughter, whether good day, a dog visit day, a dog talk with Dr. Jalo, a dog see out on the hand of things. And this is an American trained psychiatrist who lives in the United States. So if he come back and say, hey, they are doing a great job. I think they are doing a great job. I say Dr. Jallo is doing very well. Uh, that I one. Two, somebody mentioned psychiatric nurses. Well, first of all, we'll ever figure out, did they, if, if, and, and then they teach nurses them anything in psychiatry? Because to be a psychiatrist nurse, may not know how it's done in England, because then Mr. Mengot go educate me on that. But I yeah, if you're going to be a psychiatrist nurse, you are heading towards what you call nurse practitioners and a specialty, you know? So you can substitute for a psychiatrist when a psychiatrist is, 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 is absent because it's, it's a specialty all of its own. So if we get a psychiatric nurse, to get a psychiatric nurse, the, the nursing school then get for begin, or the medical school, or particularly the nursing school get for begin, teach psychiatry extensively. So nurses then will specialize in that. If we go, if that don't happen, we are just wasting with time again. And also, then in the institute, then because for a long time, mental illness in our country has been extremely neglected. You know, we see Christmas and they pass up and down and treat. They no one they get any kind of medical. I mean, medical or mental treatment. Uh, we not think we just take that as a way of life or something we would see all the time. But this also, and some of the things in the way government is supposed to do, we have to care for the less fortunate. This is the thing I see in we, we government them of today. They just don't have feelings for the poor. They just don't have feelings for people. They only care about themselves. I mean, they're not even concerned about the less fortunate. And this is common. It's common in this government. It's common in the Anes Kuruma government. It seemed to have been common in the previous governments. Tough luck if you have them for mental, forget the mental uh, 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 situation. And then, of course, a lot of times we can get dementia mixed up with craziness because we're not to try for educational people then where somebody begin get a uh, problem for remember stuff or talk out of order, we begin to say, it all crazy, it all lost in mind. And we get this simplistic approach. What we get forget out of? As soon as somebody becomes mentally sick or in the worker, they talk to himself, or at the worker alone, all time of the night, then say, now which they don't which up? Now somebody don't do them. We always get the person does see devil. We need to forget away from that. We go, we read a land book. Now that now we for educate with people then. Say, not to every time, one man gentry, they get run show, they get a devil. Well, if not so, kind of America, let you see people and we watch two, three hundred billions. We're not talking about millions now. I go like for just cross paths with the devil we didn't get. We'll make them make all that kind of money there. We get for, this is not laziness in with thought process. We don't want to try to think hard and think critically. So then the left, uh, you know, the devil, the run show, you know, we really get for educated people and more. We get for show some interest. When they make you, to me, when you are made a minister, 
your first order of business now you go care for the people them way you then put you in charge of and that goes for the least person to the person at the uh, uh, at the top but we we get so much problems there in in terms of uh how would they what like i've always criticized first of all would they put people in a position who don't qualify for the position I mean, there are a lot of challenges i can pose you have some ministers with phd but they're not qualified for the position these are well-educated people don't get me wrong you don't get a phd by just fooling around these are tough stuff you know these are well-educated people but they are being put or assigned the wrong jobs and they themselves are falling for it because they just want to impress the public they don't want i mean phd now it's a specialization you need to pick a particular field where you to create expertise in. So why are we having so much problem in resolving problems? This is what I don't understand. You know, they are making a mockery of the, of, of the system. You know, of educational process. So they, that's what infuriates me. Because they say to, to whom much is given, much is expected. You cannot have a PhD and you run a ministry as if you, 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 you finish from three. No, you know, that is unforgivable and we forecall it as we see it. So then with PhD holder, one of the rise to the level of education, we forecall them out. And when would they give PhD people a job? Now go take an engineer, you make a minister of education. Then you take a sociologist, you make a minister of finance. Then you take a, 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 a PhD in physics, you make a minister of external affairs. What is all this? This is rubbish. Because none of these areas where I don't call so, if you then position, if you get into them PhDs, then they then qualify for. They are not. And this is a wonderful problem in Sierra Leone. So in a political patronage, we just keep position to people and for the heck of it. I mean, I send an individual I can name. PhD holders, now with government, who are not qualified to run the ministry within the run. They're just not qualified. And they say they're not educated. You know, not to them feel that one day. They are not going to contribute anything to the ministry within the lead. You know, and there are some positions then where you don't necessarily get for qualifying, you fit, you go fit in another position. There are some professions, you know. Uh, you know but we, we, we they say all engineer, for there we begin to understand. Because we, did, we only the deal with effects, we only deal with causes. This is not the problem. Somebody talk about jungle justice. That's what I addressed earlier. You know, we call it vigilante justice, jungle justice. But the rule of law, now for prevail. People don't forget that part there. For just round up people, them shave their head, take them go uh, wherever we don't even know. What's in the kid and go? Like I say again, the people don't want to do this. They mean well, but we don't also see situation where some neighborhoods then say. Anybody with a deal in Kush, then go deal with them severely, physically. I we don't see there are videos. The man already is is affected by by Kush use or usage. Then we come when I go catch him for begin beat him. How is he going to quit Kush? Is is barely aware of what he did do. Is that the way? <laughs> maybe uh, like using the American phrase or co co colloquialism. So when I want for beat the 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 the, the kush out of them, that's not going to work, you know. So government need for be present in with daily lives. Uh, then we we'll talk about how do you law, law enforcement? Well, this is a basic rule. I did criminal law for a long, long time in this country. It's 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 a fundamental thing. You want to solve criminal enterprise, criminal activities, you forget informants in four months people who hang daily or hang out daily with the lawbreakers then. so then why would you use kush then will tell you the source when you go to the source will you arrest them then will tell you within the supplier and when you want to get a kingpin meaning the person where they import them if the government won't do we any good then for make it a daily publicity, how that person they even charge them with the crime. 
how that person is being handled. We we'll get if uh, I get a, a, an article now searching the police didn't do a good job. They arrest somebody. We I think even when they arrest and there was thirty five thousand dollars we we get instead of Kush uh, uh, and trader. But if that case they does get lost in the system, that person they decide for bribe somebody, then there is no effect. But if the if the if the system can publicize them by way of trying for discourage people and from engaging in it because not only you go you go you go get trouble but you go get embarrassment by publicity, all and they go help. But if we not get undercover people, we not get informants. I mean, so how are we going to fight them here? In fact, I give the police them a lot of credit that they are even able to catch some big fish in the Kush business, because it's not easy when you don't get the ground, the ground support where you need. So these are some of the things. We're not just to criticize, we're the traffic offense solution. And uh, so this state of emergency, I mean, other than the, the suggest a state of emergency. Um, oh, let me just mention about rehabilitation center. Well, like we say, Sierra Leone bigger than just Freetown. Because most of the information I have over the top when I hide, they affect the western area of Freetown. You know, I grew up up country. I grew up as far back as the eastern, the southeastern province, all the way to the end, to the Liberian border. And I know what situations look like over here. So people are using Kush. The Kush use, they'll go all them places in there. So, and then places here, then get members of parliament. So what are these members of parliament doing? Are they not seeing the effect of, their, of, of this kush? What are they doing for their constituency? It's about time they press. Then journalists begin to hold them people who are responsible, you know, and they begin to ask them. And can the government still please put some of the ministers at the, at the disposal of the rest of us will go invite them, let them take some interview, now, now program like this, or just a spontaneous interview. Let us see how they will respond. So there are a lot of things we can do for prevent and for help people. And some of them, now some of the things, and all of this that I don't name is based upon what we do learn in America, what you would think say we do learn in Canada, what you do learn in Australia, what you do learn in England. But you get this resistance to take their expertise here home. And the most disappointing, or the more disappointing situation I have, is that now we, the diasporans, them, people like me, where they talk so. Now we, when we go home and give a position, instead of we make a meaningful impact on the people in life, we are just as useless as the one that we will meet today, or even worse. It's so, it's so disappointing. We, the diasporans, them. As I said in one of our shows, no. you be, beware. Now you talk about diasporans. Yes, sir. I and think let me they have a call on the line. Hold your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Hold your thoughts. Um, hello, caller. Uh, which in, which side you call from? Yeah, I'm Mr. Shilon. Yeah, now Abdul the College. I just want All to right, make an update with you. Um, talk earlier on. Um, these are for the law enforcement agencies. That is the police the military, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and the courts, the judiciary. Because if we not get their support, look now United States here. With the robust law enforcement agency where the US gets, still people they not they not mind the they not they not mind the consequence of smug, uh, smuggling drugs. Yes alone say alone. So then law enforcement agencies, yeah, the police, the national law enforcement agency, where they say for get the new investigators, them. just like we rightly say. Now all the 16 districts, them. now the border towns, them. even the even the bypass areas, them. they forget them, the, 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 the investigators, them. we go daily, the, the, the CID, the way they did it with the surveillance. Then the the the, 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 the don't do for that we get a special court for Drug, 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 drug enforcement. With the, with the, the, the attorney general and minister of justice, with the chief justice, for work around the clock, let them set up a court. The role of the police is very, very vital. 
the police get a great role for play because sometimes in the past and we see ourselves in the present, the police they collude with the 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 the, 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 the drug bear on them. The police they collude with drug bear on them. They go not make an arrest for prosecute the case. Go then at, at the police station say he died. Look at the minister, the the, the, the sorry the the uh, the, chief, um, um, the chief of police, the inspector general. They they, they 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 make the disclosure. Say he, he impound um, cocaine or whatever from Adolan, the airport. Two out of the fifty, two of the cartoons they lost disappear. What did they do? In that investigation, they they be able to arrest, make an arrest. We know, we know, we, we we don't know. So this, these are some of the problems we we they encounter. Then the, because the, we those of us some some of some of these um um. Mischievous people are waiting at the diaspora. Self not the not the end. Because they are the ones that are shipping this because some of them they are the ones that are shipping these drugs to 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 to, to so into the country. Where don't make the country don't get bad name now amongst the neighbors. The Guineans now, where them pen where them them the Kush they they then go send at Sierra Leone and then at the, at the, at the uh, uh, export and go there. The Liberia, not for talk about Liberia, not for talk about Cote d'Ivoire and Sen Senegal and, and Gambia. They are all accusing Sierra that these things are coming from Sierra Leone. So that, this is where the law enforcement agency they for play, they for they for play, they for they, they, for, they for put their foot down and make sure they enforce. Because if the enforcement is lacking, we are going nowhere. We go talk from January to December, the problem no go no go solve. So the security forces they get a role for play. The judiciary let them make sure say them them. them they prosecute and because the people they begin to see results mm. I believe you me we, we, go, we go we go see a reduction of the, the because the before the way they say come some of them they are innocent or this that now we don't see students them where they see social institutions and people and even the, the, the police force the military they are all taking it so you just you just wonder where are we heading so the, 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 the security forces get for team up together, all of them, with the ONS, Office of National Security, all for team up together and make sure say we're able to reduce the spread of this um, um, kush and other harmful drugs to people. As so so far, well, thank you. All right, let me I'll go back to Mr. Mengot, but let us read a quick thing. All, sty all styles, no substance. This is our parliamentarians. Back to you, Mr. Mengot. Well, thank you very much. I think that's that's a, that's a good, good, good part because the last video we we'll see, I should say the man we've been talking about Mike now, a parliamentarian. Yeah. So he been saying that three things and they will get for look at. We don't look at the first one when at the political direction, the will, the political will, and we'll talk about political will. Let me give an example. We had a first lady who championed uh, hands off our girls. They, they set up a special court, if I'm not mistaken, for sexual abuse and sexual violation of women's rights. That first lady is all over the place now, giving lectures even in Harvard. You know? Yes, it's all a menace in society. But what about this kush? Kush has a more profound effect in this society. We are killing the next generation. So you talk about resources, right? Resources come in two sides. You get what you call the human resources, and this government prides itself on human capital development. Let me start with the human resources. Because the man named the things the way they talk about, psychiatric nurse, psychiatric doctors. And you, you mentioned something about a nurse practitioner. Me when I asked, so my wife, my late wife, started as a psychiatric nurse. She went into general nursing, orthopedic nursing. Uh, she was clinical nursing. And guess what? I'm very much familiar with her. All in and day. And there's one lady where I would like for Duff me up to now this program. She's called Mrs. Isata Sise Jalo. We set up the health show. These are people in the diaspora who are making a difference. Why would I mention that lady? She came out, reached out, raised funds 
and then rehabilitate ward two na Connaught Hospital for cancer patients. And guess what? In memory of my late wife, my family, and a group where my wife been to support the Young Sierra and Education and Empowerment Project, Why Sleep, we don't give so many money to train nurses in a salon. We get nurse practitioners there. We, we can send Google Help, the College of Medical and Allied Center, uh, Sciences. So with that lady who collaborates now, I mean, people like you look, it, she rehabilitated Ward 2 for the cancer ward. And because of her dedication, my family and this group, we sponsored the chemotherapy unit. You can go to Ward 2, you go see in, in memory of Mrs. Dory Mengot, my late wife. So this is what we can do from the diaspora. Go with these project champions who are ready to make a difference. We should be ashamed for say a whole country, the only rehabilitation center will get now 50 units no more again for 50 people. What are we doing in the diaspora? Let's put our money where our mouth is. Not for just talk, condemn the system, but for let we do that, and you get for get trust. We get for trust. The government get for get trust. And I should say, if the government get a health fund, then get a trust fund. Just like you get a health uh, unit now we don't, we don't work with. I remember we've been a rehabilitated corner hospital. Yeah? A foundation which we can manage. I'm sure people will contribute willingly to a fund for law get rehabilitation center in every district. Every district for get a rehabilitation center. Not just the rehabilitation center. When it finish. What are they going to do next? We talk about youth empowerment. We get Ministry of Youth. We got business. What are they doing? These are the questions we could ask. People in the diaspora could do a lot. I know people who are doing a lot. Now we get all the alma maters there. We see Annie Walsh just celebrated 175 years. We see all these beautiful ladies all over the streets. They raise a lot of money for their schools. Yes, that's good. Right? Mio Alma Mater, one of them, St. Edwards. Almost two years ago, we'll go celebrate 100 year. We gave a lot of money to the schools. Now, my other, my other school, the only one which royal, royal decree, the Prince of Wales School, next year we look forward for 100 years. And we will all be there. We know how much we will support, support the school. So let us not just be parochial and support with schools them, we, we, we ethnic groups, we villages them. This thing are a national concern. If the government willing, they set up a trust fund, which I believe that trust fund is well managed. This is how we in the diaspora can help. Some of them people that we get in this thing, you get KDDA, Corner District Development Association, you get Kenema. You get both. Frito will get a uh, crew descendant. Why each of them and they not say, okay, let we all start a project now. Each district law will fund a rehabilitation center and a resource, not just rehabilitation, resource center for our next generation. We can do it. So me and my own solution that. How we can raise funds? Skills exchange. This government, when it came to point, I remember President Bio talk about harnessing the, 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 the skills of the, the diaspora. The former government now been get the first office of the diaspora. Other countries, I work, I work in Somaliland. Somaliland is a breakaway place from, from Somalia. Now a trust fund, now they fund Somaliland. They know they get no money from World Bank or IMF. Now a trust fund, when the Somalians are doing it for themselves. You'd be surprised when I went there, helping them with their transport. They even get simulators for test drivers. Come on, Sierra Leone. I'm not comparing Sierra Leone with America or England. I'm comparing Sierra Leone with South Africa. I've been fortunate to work in 25 African countries. The next part where I will just stop where, where we will say, now the collaboration where somebody talk about. I feel a pity for the man at NDLA. We talk about saying get 12 staff. Yes, that's fine. But we get another agency because we are good at agencies. ONS, Office of National Security, right? Drug issue is a security issue. So even if NDLA not get enough staff, right? ONS then at every district 
how do you work in collaboration? NDLA, ONS. The ONS can be the inv investigators, the way that they talk about. For past law to the strategic part of the NDLA, right? We can do it. This collaboration, because now, even at the next topic we want to go to, right? Because we get half an hour more. I, when you talk about managing our urban space or our environment, right? You get Ministry of Environment, National Public uh, Area Author Protected Area Authority, NPA. So you get one with the environment, you get NPA, Protected Area Authority. Then you get another one, EPA, Environmental Protected uh, Authority. And then you get the next one where they can give you and then call the forest ranger. Yeah. Then you get disaster management. All these agencies working for managed environment. Yet still we they see forest depletion. We they see we water catchment area they're depleted. Why create all these agencies if we don't have collaboration? We don't have lines of communication. We don't have chain of command. We don't have the resources. Get one agency. Let's focus on this. We they create more ministries. Like, for instance, now, you take we get Ministry of Information. I remember in one days, we get Ministry of Information and Communication. Now, what did they not do? They not split the ministry into two. They call Ministry of Information and Civic Education. They get uh, communications and information technology. You go back to social services. It's very social welfare. You get Ministry, ministry of Gender, uh, Children and Gender Affairs. You get Ministry of Social Welfare. You go education, you get Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, you get Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education. So we just split creative ministry and all the ministries and they get agencies. And these are agencies who are regulatory agencies. Why not we consolidate, we collaborate, we use effective resources and get people there. We get the skills and knowledge for deliver. Albeit under the direction, supervision of a parliament that represents the people. So that end there for, for, for today. We can go on and on, but as in a no own area, now on governance, parliamentary affairs. So last last stop there today, then we can take, we can either continue or do the other topic way okay. that trend in news for today. Yes, sir. Let, let me just touch on some of the, uh, and just add one or two things on which you just say. Like I always say, every time we hear you, uh, anybody who they listen to you in particular has to walk away more educated than they were when they start listening. Because, but certain things me always say, one thing we're extremely good at, if there was an Emmy Award or Oscar Award for just naming things, I don't think any country can outdo Sierra Leone. Just like how you call it here. National Enforcement Agency, National Security Agency, Ministry of Environment, you know, then you get a, a Environmental Protection Agency, ridiculous, ridiculous overlapping of, uh, of responsibilities and ministries. And you see, it, it's so annoying because, and we know say, the more than split than chair, the more inefficient the system gets. What, let me start with education. We affect, we all will go through. Take we on time. Take even, okay, people like Senge there, Senge and a young man, you see? I mean, the guy is 35 years old, 36 years old, so he can't even reflect back to like we own him, like we not own him, okay? So, and during the war, I don't even think Yenge, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Senge had even finished high school. So, there is very little they can relate back to. But what was wrong with the system as it was? What was wrong with it? Most of we when a product of the old system come out pretty good. In fact, almost without exception, there was a time when you left school standard six, you could write English very efficiently. When you finish from six, you are as knowledgeable as anybody else. And if you get a degree, just a bachelor's degree was all you needed. Very few people had a master's or PhD because it was so unnecessary because you don't get all the education. It was working, it was efficient. 
What thing happen with them with people there? Where they go land this book, then come out, then begin split hairs. For example, what is this thing about basic education, higher education? Education is education. Now, in the Ministry of Education, when I can get sections where they deal with, with, with lower education or elementary education, that's a, it's a different call. But forget two ministries, and every ministry has its own bureaucracy. Meaning, every ministry... So, to me, this is irresponsible. Because when you, have, when, when you split a ministry like that, you get for higher staff from bottom all the way to the top. So is it just for political expediency? Is the money there for even support the ministries there? Then vital ministries that won't need money. But even once upon a time, the ACC commissioner, they say, he asks for so much, then gain so much. So he never even get what he need. So you see, all the internet, there, you know, uh, 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 in order to do we any good, we need to shy away from them, fantastic renaming of of things them then redundancy here you know what we begin for consolidate some of their ministries here i appoint more less ministers we can't be complaining about money money in a day but anytime we turn around with it with it and that don't that not involve special appointments you know appointments for everything specialist Appoint <laughs> yes special specialist advisors advisors. For yes sir Specialist advisors for, for, for intake and breathing of air, specialist advisor for uh, this, specialist. It, it's so frustrating because these are so unnecessary. Money well, is being wasted. The interesting thing we, we, we get, the interesting thing we get, we see an appointment for a specialist advisor for rice. Yes. <laughs> and yet still with they import, with they import rice 30 days. So chicken. you wonder what in the advice? What, what good is dollars of chicken? <laughs> These are all things that they would think we reach what we can do, you know, and even export. We are still, we are still. I mean, energy. We we'll get ministers where they get on on a degree for 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 being a good minister, but yet we get blackouts left and right. I mean, mediocrity. Everything has become mediocrity has become the order of the day. And some of you for just like, like that, for just say, this is fine for we. This is, for some people, it's okay. As long as they're in party, they're in power. You know, but for we, we don't rise above that party politics day. It's annoying. What we know say, we can do better. So there is a lot more we can talk about in here. Well, let will just move on to the next thing we'll be saying we want for cover. Now, this demolition. Yeah, we've got 20 of, minutes now. Uh, Yes, sir. So I will let you take the lead on that, Mr. Mangot. Then I will follow on the demolition. Uh, 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 um, what will yeah, take place I, in a various area? I think the first one we for look at, we go follow with you the talk. If the control room can play the the video about a place called Angola Town, where somebody they complain about how they go demolish. Property will belong to a particular family. Um, family, today we did in Angola, the awareness network team, K Star and K Wise. As even the trainer media say, the land issue day between the Angola people and when are the coal family and the Syria block them. So people have not been get the detail of them. Um, now we don't kind of the field today for key Sierra Leoneans than the detail. Um, Kesta, no. I think say, you didn't have the field now, you see the damage then way then don't occur, so you could talk about them. Fumble, well, as my colleague they say, we didn't Angola. This place is owned by co family. Co family, now they get this place, then don't make a lot of investment. Now, now, yeah. This now, I will hope correct, wait and but I would have come put down with in team. Then say, this place are yeah, not to private place they say na place of uh, land they say na government land but guess what the coal family then get two ruling on this particular place here where they hike the way they cut off the land then satisfy say the coal family na they get this place they rule on and say this bonafide place here belong to the coal family then get the ruling 
Now, Tamba Davula don't crap with him, Papati. A car, it take police then, soja then, a say, na ministry in Engaya, then come broke Naya. Then, okay, then court warrant, and okay, then notice. Um, okay, Kesta, thank you very much. Family, as Kesta, they talk, on the scene at the background, they build in the way, they don't demolish. This now the building and this way people I mean don't the structures and this way people I mean don't put now this land here over ten years and above they don't can destroy all and this land here not also they just afford this land they not acquire this land illegally they acquire this land legally everybody this land in London are there over nineteen fifty something till up till now now then days are now time but doubt that any team from the lands come they don't demolish all the houses the way people and don't build and some of the houses then as one of the see tambadawda and signature then they they if they don't sign say them people them now they get them property then then later a balance bar come it destroy everything all right well mr mango before you come in life just to explain to viewers that yes, okay. tambadawda and the director of land so i can give you text sir, on the legal point no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. No, no problem, no problem. Now, what I'm saying, the Tamba Dauda is the director of lands. The director of lands, and according to what the, the, the person say, we can't substantiate that, you know. He says some of the documents there where the landowners can get, now the very Tamba Dauda, now he sign them as director of lands. We mean he give them ownership of that landing. So why then for now government come say na government land? La left land they let you give it you legal take on this because it's they happen so many times and land issue na issue there and another Angola town there. I know some of people in a na diaspora and them they go build na them place then there because you get Angola town, you get New York. I was surprised you get New York na Frito. Because people already come out and go build and call a New York. So what's in that you take, sir, on this legal due processes? What? and abuse of us okay these are some of the things number one you hear this uh talk about oh when i for come home when are the diasporans them but it's clear not only with this government but with even previous governments them the diasporans who are there who are within the power structure they are going governments and anywhere they don't know they don't want anybody to come because if you want to let people in come then they go invest the money when I not go just then take them draconian policies then they. But the thing that bothers me the most, if we really love a country, should the director of lands just get the authority for those order, the demolition of property or the taking of property then without court involvement? And then this is even confusing when the, the, the man with the comments on this video say, then they'll get two rulings. I, I think he mean rulings of the court say it belong to a particular family. And yet a, 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 a director or a minister can overrule the court and there is nothing like contempt. Is that where we really want to go? That's what we want for rule of country, that the rule of law not apply? Because why? I mean, for just on the whim of one person, you will go and demolish houses. And this situation, then the Chuck say, are against court, I mean, ruling in favor of the people there. You know, what is the rush, what is the urgency for demolish them worse than they? You know, uh, why do they have to be demolished right away? Now, the pattern, what would I see back home, Australian? Whenever this happens, there are bigger interest group of people who get influence and money most of them from abroad, foreigners, not Australians, them. We want that same location there. Every time we see that, that's what normally can be the, 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 the influence behind. And you remember once upon a time, and this, guy, this has to stop. I talk about, I don't care. The marketplace. I don't care, the marketplace. A Lebanese businessman wanted the place. They want for building. He was able, this not to even minister, just a few elders them in the community. Then take the marketplace, then the market, then, 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 then sell unto the Lebanese. Timon to the Yun, the Lebanese put a two-story hostel, 
Then they begin for arrest and detain young people and over the protest. Is this the way we want your country to be? I mean, this is, and the thing that gets me is the fact that, uh, why are we doing this to ourselves? And I also mentioned just now that Mr. Sandy, they go demarcate some other uh, 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 target couple of property them, the old railway stations they're up with by force, for be demolished. Because again, Turkey in Saudi Arabia see that as a good spot. You know, these are historic buildings there now. Where is man to get ready for demolish? So how long are we going to keep that trend there? And if people like we not point that out, we else go point that out. But I think say me own suggestion to the people them, of course, like they say the Cole family are not going to court, they not get ruling. So Mr. Dowda and the rest of them, they should say the court no mean nothing to them. Well, if if last what in the judiciary, if not that position they didn't say if they wanted to relegate them, the judiciary is 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 acquiescing to the belief that the judiciary no matter, court order no matter, it is bad, it is terrible. So that's all I can say for that because, I mean, the demolition way we see, particularly of private property, we don't even talk about government property, uh, it's just unfair. I mean, you say a lot of people in way own property in the Western area, they, then get them paperwork for proof, saying that they get it. So government just can't come. Like I tell people in once upon a time, the whole idea about the constitution for a country is restriction on the power of government. Not for not a restriction of on the activities of people. That is controlled by statute. The constitution is mostly what government shall not do. And if government do something, how they can do it. It's mostly a restriction on the power of government for prevent excesses of power. You know, but I think say we they turn the whole thing around because government is doing a whole lot of stuff. You get just one person. And we see it up happening on at every level. So I don't know how long that is going to continue and we hope for get a better future. You know, I, I can't see how that will work. We we'll therefore respect the system. And judges too should be respect the system in the sense that therefore be willing to promote justice. You cannot be an accomplice to uh, an activity when you, the judge, no say uh, it shouldn't be so. So this is not just politicians no more, not just, because at every level, because if because I, I know of instances upon instances where people who own their own home. You get a group of people where they can't just claim no more than going to court in Australia and then somehow they manage to get some kind of judgment. We have to stop that. If we don't stop that, we're hurting the country. Because even the Tambadawda, all the one there, at the end of the day, nobody lives forever. You go die, you go left bad legacy for you picking them, your grand picking them. And what do you think, say you do, it will probably can backfire on you picking and grand picking them. You know? So, but now, what will make the, the situation safe for we all? You make everybody play in an equal level green um, and playing field. That night, now the guarantee that we will we, we'll get for say, yes, we will left something good for for next generations. But this thing about just thinking that, oh, you will live forever, so you will turn the system upside down. But it's only short lived. What's going to happen after you die? Well, you don't. There's whatever you take. And give and, and, and give somebody else. How you young picking or, or next people or next generation go protect themselves? Where you don't die, you don't go. You know. But apparently people don't care about that. But my thing is, we have to be careful. Now we know say there is another sector about the demolition. So I don't know if they can play that video there for we again, Mr. Mengo. So you have something to say? No, I think let's let's play the other video because we get about seven more minutes. Because then they, yeah, if we play yeah, that are, that are the other demolition will take place at the beach. Mom's <laughs> 
Sorry. That's All side choker now, all side. I'm both moms and uncle. All the people network, where they under the Abadim branch. Today, the community people have called me at the lonely beach where I can see massive broken to take place. We will not tell well for this government. If we will not say the truth, we will not go, we will not go, we will not go forge ahead. But we will not say the truth. The youth man in the sofa, they get sad, who said they can't get the living. Now they don't come broke up. We will not say they might not broke up. But the, main, the most important uh, place is there. Now the Abadi Lomb the beach. Now they broke calm down. Who said the youth man will go get a job tomorrow? His Excellency, sir, at the plead. For the youth man there, let it broke let's stop. If you don't stop, a big slap to the SNPP government. And even the one who they vote for this government, they don't begin to talk against that. Say, they don't ever vote for SNPP like this government. Uh, 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 no more. You see, who said they will get a living? Our family is only out to. So, you, Papa, government, with the plead for two MLS broke let's stop. Who said they don't stop? So, let's stop there. We get the most expensive buildings there. The most expensive structures in our beach. No, 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 no. Mamzi. Joy. Jocks. 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 Uh, restaurant. We are the most powerful building at the, at the beach. So we hope, see, if they say they broke so, let them broke all. If they broke all, it could be nice. But if they left anyone, now a big problem. To this government and the OTP people, they say right down at the place. And when they do the broken, me as the council of the same call me, I come here. So, do His Excellency, sir, are they still a plea? Are they still a plea for letting this broken stop? Anybody who see this, you will be out there and say, Take to the president, make you see this broken, you will go out at the beach. The other people will go out for a short canteen. Even the SAP people, they say, they grow annoyed. So what are we going to do? So His Excellency, let them go around the table back. Yeah? Uh, thank you. Oh, Yeah, we just show this demolition for says this is now other issue now where they go demolish some building there at the beach. But one of the things the way I think so we we'll go for look this in, con in together because that lonely beach here now one of the main attraction for tourists now get the best to we we'll get a few minutes, but we we'll go for look at two then the, the process also where they use for demolish their structure. Yeah? The effect on tourism and the effect of youth unemployment. And also, we go look at in contention of the way we then say, then they try for attract tourists to a country. So then people then they with their livelihood and loss, we will never go into details. We will not get much time. But this demolition way then they demolish some people and building with, although I've been listening to the, the, the video or the interview, with the man from the tourist board, in all fairness to him, incident structure, they're in a temporary structure, they give them permits, and they mean tell them, say, where they need them, they go get for remove them. But the other two I say is that they mean the structure that they're not built according to waiting them in specification. So if you give somebody permits for build a structure, not to you roll for inspect and doing the building for pass up, you know, we don't need a years though you say you can't broker and not be meet your standard. So that left family under they will see say all in here what they do it affects with people them it affects society and people and they take the law into their own hands. I don't know if you are add anything because we get few minutes oh, yes, for round up the project. Okay.
The, the yeah. only thing I want for add, you can tell the tourist person who you say you listen to, you can tell, say, is being disingenuous, just like you say. The whole idea about allowing a structure to be put up, whether temporary or permanent structure, is subject to inspection. Somebody in those kind can't build there. If anybody can't can build at the place without permission, then the government, you could blame the government there because that never happened. But some of the people in the complaint say, some people say they even go pay the, pay for the license for operate just a few days before the demolition. And it would seem to me as a matter of due process, even if that's the position being taken by the government. Because for me, it's not a persuasive argument for or, or, or reason for say, well, they structure them, that they, will, they, they will be given permission to be erected for a, a, a temporary structure, whatever that means. But when I get a certificate of occupancy, because otherwise the government themselves will get a certificate of occupancy when they jeopardize customers then then, then safety. Okay, because if the, if the structure they're not so uh, 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 um, satisfying that we, uh, they're not for occupier, then why would they allow them for invite people them at the place they for do business? So they're not to me not to convince in business. Now, again, if you watch the train, and then, let's watch what's happening. That place there is not being cleaned up because of the reason they give. You get some other powerful group who want for building at that same spot, then they would have angry space. This is what we do. Just watch what's going to happen. That's where, that's, that most likely, that's, that's the force behind the whole trend. You see? So, how are you going to encourage this investment? And if you're a foreigner, you say yourself, you ought to think twice. Say, well, here they are demolishing a structure because I pay money for can't occupy that same spot they were another structure today. What's going to happen, me, foreign investor, I can't put me, my <clears throat> business in there. A few years from now, I die, and I'm the family, they run up. What is going to stop another government for can one day and bulldoze everything? Are it we all better off that the courts get involved in things there? And why they talk about the courts? It's not that like the courts are being run by angels. We're going to forget courts them. We believe in the rule of law themselves. But this thing about demolishing to, to the point of the the, the 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 MP for that area, they, they say they say this taken by surprise. There's a total disregard for lives and property in the country now. And is that what we want on that level? They want Sierra Leone for, for dissent, when uh, it will be just survival of the fittest, you know, that the ordinary man not get any protection, the poor man with the hustle day in and day out, thinking, you know, are considered to be disposable. I mean, it's, it's scary, you know? Um, so, again, you may have some people who have seen nothing wrong with that. But I see a whole lot wrong with that. And uh, because these are people where they put the hand, hand, the hard earned sweat and labor into building some of the structures there. Now, may not the question the government with respect to what are the location, may not the, not the intent behind the demolition, I mean, highly suspicious of. Because then locations and they, they, then business and they, and in fact, if, even if it serves a useful purpose, a redeeming social value. Let me put it that way. There. Well, why not give people an adequate notice? Why not give them a year's notice, say effective January 1st or December 31st, 2024, or December 31st, 2025? We intend for demolish and remind them on the radio and TV and other media for, say, the time to come over. So people will not be taken by surprise. But there are some people who say they get money, they get uh, 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 documents, all these things without notice or notification, and just come, boom, then build those the whole place. You know? So you bring an ab abrupt stop to the lives and livelihood of people there. So again, we're just pointing thing out because it's not fair. You know? So we don't know who that then get property. We don't know if we don't know SFP, we don't APC, because that's irrelevant. What is relevant is that Australians, as well as 
non Australians, as long as you deal with your borders, be treated with dignity, you know, as human beings, and not violate the people in law. I mean, the rights, you know, the civil and human rights. What we see in India happen now. So that's all I have to say. Uh, so, Mr. Mengo, that's all I have to say. Unless you have something else, I, I, I will say goodbye. Well, I just want to tell me, family, and thank you for listening to me. And just to say, I will get one particular post I was in Kenya, because one of the places where I've been there, now on Safari Lodge. So then they advertise the Safari Lodge, and you get this, this cheetah, it laid on before the lodge, with the caption, even the fastest sometimes need to take a rest. So, with an indulgence, I decide out for take a rest to an undisclosed location in West Africa for go enjoy the Easter period. So I will see you in a back in a fortnight time. So take care of yourself and be good and stay safe. And let's all work together for make Salon better. Thank you.